Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight With, and today I'm joined by somebody who I'm very excited to speak with today. He's a top lightweight prospect from Australia and somebody who I've had my eye on for quite some time now, ever since he fought Adam Cook. I, you know, that was just a phenomenal fight, some a fight that really put everyone on notice and really brought everyone on to him. And in terms of, you know, in terms of skill set and in terms of activity, He's a very active fighter with a lot of fights, a great resume as both an amateur and a professional. He's fighting on Dana White Contender Series Season 7, and you know, he's another Australian who's looking to make a big impact in the UFC. I'm joined by Tom Nolan, aka Big Train. Thanks for having me on, brother. Absolutely, man. And first and foremost, obviously, thank you so much for your time. I know you were smashing a bit of training just now, and you know, just thankful for the opportunity as always to chop it up. Obviously, Tom... The, the bombshell of announcement came today that you'll be fighting on Season 7 of the Contender Series. I think a lot of people are not really surprised because your skill set has always been there. But in terms of yep. just a great announcement, great news for the Australian fan base, yet another fighter from Australia fighting for the coveted UFC contract. And you obviously being one of those fighters who showcase time and time again, you are one of the next up-and-coming fighters from Australia. Talk to me about the reception and obviously how you're feeling right now with the announcement now out there. Yeah, man, it's good to be able to announce it. I've known about this for um, probably about 10 weeks now, so I've had to hold my tongue, which has um, been pretty difficult. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm past the excitement stage and I'm, I'm ready to get in there and work. You know, I've, I've been training since I found out. Well, I'm always training, but I've been specifically training since I found out. Um, so I feel like I'm more than ready for this. and I can't wait to get in there. No, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you talk about just the skill set that you have and the record you have. You know, you have an extensive amount of experience. Uh, grant, granted, you were 6-1 as an amateur, 5-0 and oh as a professional. I feel like this is a long time coming, and I feel like you've really been primed through how well the Australian mixed martial arts circuit has kind of progressed for this moment, and it's really prepared you in another way. You know, talk to me just about having this wealth of experience going into this matchup and having fought under so many bright, uh, so many great promotions under the bright lights so many times. And, you know, obviously just the mindset right now, because like you said, you've always been training, obviously, but this time around, you know, definitely taking it up a notch a little bit. So talk to me about that. Yeah, so um, I've had a extensive career, like you said. Um, I started, I had my first fight at 14 years old. Um, so, yeah, I had a big career, amateur career uh won a few belts and then moving into the pro rankings fighting for eternal you know um the best promotion in australia by a mile and i personally think australia has the best uh, local scene in the world i think we're pound for pound i think the dudes in australia are just phenomenal i think everyone i've fought is legitimate and um i can't say the same for my opponent i don't, I don't believe he's fought anywhere near the caliber of opponent i've fought so i think on paper, he's got more experience than me, but I think going into this, he's going to find out that I definitely have the experience on my side. Oh, and something you just said there, I absolutely loved was, and I agree with you, and I'm a big, I think I'm a big advocate for just in terms of you know local regional scenes. I don't think that any other country even has it bang on like Australia. Obviously, the states have their fair share of promotions and some great promotions like LFA, CFFFC, and you know just some other great, uh, decent promotions like Fury. But in terms of overall consistency, no one comes close to Australia and New Zealand. Like those two, you know, with Hex Fighting Series, with Eternal, and with mm. a lot of just even the amateur promotions. Amateur scene is phenomenal. Yeah. Like you look at what they've got, you've got obviously, and then you've got Urban Fight Night putting on amateurs on professional cards. You've got, you know, Silverback Fight Series, Diamondback, you know, just a lot of promotions. And at such a high level, the amateur circuit, I don't think it's even an amateur circuit truly. I think it's just like, labeled that obviously just for the sake of it being an amateur circuit but more or less the guys are fighting like they're seasoned professionals basically just with no pay regardless mm. like as it is as a guy coming up but australia yeah. probably has the most bang on amateur and professional mixed martial arts scene i think i've ever seen and it's no easy matchups you look at even just the champions in eternal you look at someone like justin van herden kevin jose you know mm. guys that are fighting from australia and new zealand who've been through the ringer and the record reflects that you know you know look at justin he's like 12 and 5 but, or 13 and 5 but he's fought some crazy guys up and coming and for you it's yeah, the for same sure. thing you know mm. from your third fight and on you know you're fighting you're fighting uh, cook and that was just a phenomenal performance against a, a guy from city kickboxing great record it's like one of those circuits where it's just flooded with you know top notch talent and it the record shows cuz yeah. it's just the australian mma scene is skyrocketed Mm, yeah 100 percent. no yeah definitely and then you know just obviously looking at how far the the scene has progressed in australia you know you look at from where it came like just five or six years ago 
it's gone leaps and bounds and you fought both on the amateur circuit and on the professional circuit in that time talk to me just about the evolution obviously witnessing this evolution in australian mixed martial arts and being a part of it because we've seen waves come and go of fighters that make it to the ufc or make it to a major promotion but it feels like time and time again it's always just something new talk to me about what it feels like to be living through that and training through that yeah so um you know starting off in the amateur career it's like you know you're fighting out of a pub um drunk people everywhere it's, it's i mean it's good experience for i guess being used to those sort of situations but now with eternal right like we're fighting in sold out stadiums with you know cameras here and equipment there and and, and it's the closest uh to the ufc i've come across obviously and um i think it's i think it's prepared me for for the ufc i think you know when i got there and i saw the bells and whistles for uh, my media day it's it's definitely awesome don't get me wrong but it felt very natural to me i think eternal have prepared me for that already like uh it, it's 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 very similar yeah no, yeah, definitely. And I think even just then, it's like, it's primed a lot of people for that big stage, like you said. And more importantly, mm. you know, it's it's not a promotion that skimps around making good matchups. I think Eternal and Hex have consistently put together quality, you know, matchups. They don't shy away from putting people against each other. And the record reflects that, you know. A lot of these guys who have losses are all fighting the best guys continuously. You know, a great example is Conor Flea versus Jared Wilbraham, which I cannot stop talking about mm. right now. A phenomenal perform, a, a phenomenal fight by both gentlemen, and you know their records show it. You know, Con being eleven and two, Jared being I think seven or eight and two. It's just like, even though they have losses, it, it reflects how high the skill level is in Australia, and I feel like that's the reason why the UFC keeps coming mm. back to Australia. So talk to me about obviously just having these guys to look up to on that on that higher level. You know, guys from the UFC and just having kind of the sport being reflected in a whole different light in Australia with new media coverage. And just overall, the sport is improving as a whole. What are your thoughts on Australian mixed martial arts right now? Yeah, well, when I was an amateur coming up through the ranks, you know, I um, I knew that the pros already were phenomenal. I remember watching uh, Jack Della as an amateur thinking, like, he's unreal. But it was hard to gauge where we were at in the um, scheme of things in the whole world because there wasn't that many people going through. But now with these UFC fight pass deals, you, you see these guys going through and now you see like um, uh, St uh, Stephen Urseg the other day, you know, like goes out there and um, dominates a world-class guy like it's nothing, you know, a short notice. Um, so it really does put into perspective how good we really are. I think that's definitely played a huge factor in, in my confidence for myself knowing, well, those guys can do it. They are doing it. So I can definitely do it, you know. No, yeah, absolutely. And like you mentioned, Stephen Ersek, a phenomenal performance by him, really speaks to the depth of the Australian mixed martial arts scene where it's no longer just mm -hmm. maybe one or two guys, but more or less you have three or four or five guys from each division that can really make a name for themselves. And it's happening at such a continual yeah. rate. And then more importantly, Tom, you know, I think for the wealth of skill that you have, your age does not reflect that. I think that in terms of respect, you've garnered a lot of respect from a lot of professionals and a lot of veterans in this sport. At only 23 years of age, yeah. you have over almost 15, 16, eight, coming on 20 bouts as a professional. Talk to me about the reception, the, the love and support that you've been getting. Because you've you've been training since 14, but you know, you've know you put on performances like you are a seasoned veteran. You've put on performances like you've been in this sport for a very, very long time. And your skill reflects that beautifully. Um, yeah, I think the respect I've gotten uh, comes from exactly what you said in my display of performance, you know, going out there and um, fighting the way I do really aggressively. I think um, I think, I think think people love that. The fans love it. The other fighters respect it. So I think that's got a big part to do with that. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think even just in your recent trip to America, you know, obviously training at Extreme Couture, the reception had to be, you know, like this kid does not fight like a guy who just got into the sport because I hate to compare and I, I feel like it's like almost like comparing apples to oranges, but... You know, obviously there are some fighters your age who are still very much working things out and obviously just depends on when you start yeah. training. But I feel like we also have that generation of young guys, like a great example is Song Gidong, you know, young guy yeah, with over yeah. 20 something fights, only 24, 25 years of age, but he fights like he's been in this sport for at least 15, 20 years. You know, I feel like those mm. guys that are really coming up from a young age, the skill reflects that. And I mean, just talk to me about the trip to Vegas. How was that trip, obviously, leaving, you know, Queensland and coming to, uh, you know, the States in Las Vegas? What was that experience like? And, you know, how would you kind of rate? I know America, for all its flaws, you know, it's still a place that yeah. premier people, uh, a lot of the premier fighters love to come and train. I mean, how do yeah. you rate America coming here and just training here for the, you know, one of the first times? 
Um, well, the flight wasn't super fun. I've never been uh, out of the country. I've, I've really barely been on a plane before, so that wasn't the most fun, but it was a good experience. Um, yeah, America was awesome, man. I, I loved it. I had so much fun over there. Um, I think the culture is great. I think the food's great. The people are nice. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I can't wait to go back, to be honest. No, yeah, definitely. I think, like, even especially Vegas, like, the fight capital of the world, obviously, you know, somewhere that a lot of fighters really benefit from going in terms of recovery, in terms of training, and in terms of just treatment of fighters, it really feels like a home away from home for some. And, you know, you've obviously made a big name for yourself in the 155 pound division. I wanted to ask you, obviously, granted, you get the victory on Dana White Contender Series, which I assume you'll have no doubt in doing because, you know, you're a phenomenal mixed martial artist. But talk to me about how you kind of pre project and see yourself in that 155 division landscape. Should you, you know, make it into the UFC and get that contract? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to fit in really well with the division. I think I'm, you know, I'm 6'3". I'm, I'm very tall. I'm, I understand my range. I think there's a lot of tall guys. Oh, sorry. Fuck, my phone's playing up. You got me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tall guys, but I don't think they know how to use their range uh, very well. And I think that's a skill I've got. Um, I didn't have it down pat until moving to Team Compton. Now, you know, I, my inside game is phenomenal, I believe. Um, I'm yet to show it because a lot of people haven't been able to get in there. But, yeah, I feel like, man, anywhere the fight goes, any distance at any range, we have it down to a point of, of so many different systems and so many different layers where... I think most fighters, they kind of have either short or long range and that's it. And we have multiple layers to that. So um, I think I'm going to fit in well. I think a lot of people are going to maybe underestimate me because of my age or uh, maybe maybe because of my fights going quickly. But um, yeah, I think I'm going to I'm gonna burst onto the scene. I think I'm going to become a big star, to be honest. I'm, I'm absolutely 100% certain I'm going to win this contract. No, yeah, definitely. And obviously, Tom, first and foremost... Just thank you so much for your time and being able to hop on for the quick chat. Oh, you know, really, I'm, I'm a really big fan of what you've done. And really, I think that you found your form. Uh, I think, obviously, amongst being a great mixed martial artist, you've really showcased it to another level from your last three performances, notching finishes in yeah. all three of those performances and really showcasing a level beyond what you were already at. And I think at such a young age, you really strike uh, a healthy balance between what it is like to train and, you know, really balance that training start. Because I think, obviously, your youth plays to your advantage here where you're able to recover at another level, but you also possess the skill of a lot of great fighters. And I look forward to watching you in the yep. UFC. But just a final question here, you know, obviously, assu uh, assuming all goes to plan, you get the victory, you get the contract, uh, what are some personal goals? How are you looking to get into the UFC, uh, UFC fight or get into an event almost immediately afterwards? What's the goal for after the contract? Yeah, look, I don't want to look past this at all. Um, you know, if I come out unscathed, then, yeah, I would love to get back in early, you know. Um, I want to put my mark out there straight away. I want to show everyone, you know, I want to make my debut and I want it to be electric. But in saying that, if I'm, you know, if I'm beat up a bit, I'll take my time, recover properly and get back in there. No, yeah, but yeah, I'm, man, I'm, I'm just 100% focused on this next guy, you know. I can't wait to get my hands on this guy. I'm, I'm very excited for this one. Absolutely, man. I think a lot of the fans are excited to just watch you fight. A lot of the Australian fans specifically. I know that in terms of support, the Australian fans are like no other, you know. They really support their guys yeah, from the come up to now. Really, it doesn't even matter if it's regional yeah. guys or not. They support you guys like no other. And, you know, I it, think yeah. a lot of people will kill to see you on that Sydney card. Hopefully, all goes to plan. We yeah. can't see you on that Sydney card. And, you know, just thank you I so much. I would like to get on that. Yeah, man. That's, that's yeah. a phenomenal card. And, you know, first and foremost, yeah. thank you for your good energy. Thank you for your time. I look forward to watching you fight okay, on the brother. Contender Series, man. And, yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed this interview, do be sure to check out Tom Nolan's social media in the description down below. He's going to be fighting on Dana White Contender Series Season 7. I think, honestly, if you guys haven't watched any of his fights, do go watch his fight with Adam Cook, CKB Talent, another great fighter in his own realm. And Tom just fought and wiped the floor with him. It was a great performance on both ends. And Tom really stood out there. I think a great performance. Do be sure to check him out. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave, guys, obviously. If you guys enjoyed this video, do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.